Felix Adichumo, all the way from Nigeria. I cannot hear you. Put your hands together for her like a Kenyan. Come on. Clap until she says hello. Thank you so much. As we break the bread of life, please bless us and do us good. In the name of Jesus, we've prayed and everybody will shout amen. Amen. Please give the Lord a big hand and you may be seated. For Samuel chapter 17, beginning from verse number 1. Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were gathered together at Shoko, which belongs to Judah, and pitched between Shoko and Azekah in Ephes Domin. Verse 2. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah and set the battle in array against the Philistines. Verse 3, And the Philistines stood on a mountain on the one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. Verse 34, And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear. And took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. Verse 37, David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. The Lord be with thee. Say amen. amen. That's the greatest gift you can have. The Lord be with thee. Amen. Shout it better. Amen. Can you? Amen. This morning, the message God laid on my heart is titled... I am too useful to be wasted. Yeah. I'd like you to stand up and walk up to two different people and with your mouth while the angels of God are watching. Announce it. I am too useful to be wasted. You are not bold. You are not speaking it with boldness. Obey prophetic instruction. Two more people. I am too useful to be wasted. Hey, <laughs> Leslie, I am too useful to be wasted. Sinaj, you are too useful to be wasted. Everybody shout, I am too useful to be wasted. Take your seat. Sometimes we need to be reminded of some things. Because of what we go through and because of what life throws at us. Sometimes we forget. So we have a story here. David and Goliath. David's brothers, his father, and the entire tribe of Israel. The Bible says that <laughs> there was a gathering 
And there will always be two kinds of gatherings as far as you breathe and as long as you breathe. One, gathering for you. Two, gathering against you. Because when you get to the top, you must become the topic. And forever and ever, elevated people will be criticized by frustrated people. So stop complaining that they are criticizing you. Stop complaining that they are talking about you. It's because you are at the top. But one interesting thing about this story is that the Bible says they were gathered against Israel in Shokor that belongs to Judah. That's strange. Shokor did not belong to the enemy. Shokor belonged to Judah. But the enemy decided to sit upon what belongs to Judah and use it to oppress Judah. And this may be the pictorial image of the lies of some of you here. It is your own. But the enemy is using it to oppress you. Today, in the name that is above every other name, I terminate the ministry of the oppressor. Amen. That your amen is just warming up. Yeah. In the previous chapter, David had just been anointed the king of Israel. Or the king over Judah. For Samuel chapter 16. And then, in chapter 17, because he had returned to the bush. <laughs> Some of you, the moment you are lifted, you leave your place of service. It was sweeping that God saw and laid it on the heart of your leader to lift you. Now that you have become a deaconess, now that you have become anointed, you leave sweeping. And you are now looking for who to carry your bag and carry your leg and carry your bum bum <laughs> and call you mama, junior mama. Really? When the blessing and the reward come, the angel takes to your place of assignment, your primary place of assignment. That's one of the reasons I keep telling you. It was broom phone I was holding before Jesus gave me microphone. Until Jesus comes, that broom phone, he will find it in my hand. He went back, he returned to where he was called. To be anointed. And then, in 1 Samuel chapter 17, the Bible says, his father said to him, come and take cheese, food, to your brothers. David did not know that that was a journey of destiny. Take this and go feed your brothers. He did not know that it was going to be the beginning of his global and eternal announcement. Because from that point, his life soared. Sometimes your leader will send you on an assignment that you may not like. God uses people and pain to train us. And you're wondering, why will, he, why will she tell me to go wash clothes? And that pastor said, why will she tell me to go do dishes? Because anytime God wants to take the measurement of a man, God does not put the tape around the man's head or body. God puts the tape around his heart. The size of your heart is more important than the side of your head. That woman said in her heart, if only I can touch the hem of his garment, not in her head. 
Anytime God wants to take your measurement, he doesn't put the tape root around your body. He puts it around your heart. What are you saying? So David took the cheese. And on his way, he stopped by the sea or river, brook, and he picked five stones. Five stands for grace. He picked five stones. Those stones had sent things. Those stones had sent storm. Those stones had seen <laughs> stuff. Those stones. The Bible refers to those stones as smooth stones. Smooth. You know what it takes to be smooth. So David picked those smooth stones. And then he gets to the battlefield. He thought he brought food. He didn't know he brought grace. Sometimes you think you just appear. Did you hear what I said about Sinatra a few minutes ago? It's not just about her song. Everybody sings. There are people that sing maybe better than Sinatra. But there's something about your presence. That was what I said to her. And whatever gives you that presence, keep it. Because it is that presence that fights your battle, not the song. What am I preaching? There are preaching machines everywhere. That was why I prayed that prayer for you at the beginning, that the Lord be with you. For if God be with you, it does not matter who is against you. Follow me on this journey this morning. It's a short word. I'll soon be done. And then he gets to the battle field and he began to hear one uncircumcised demon possessed nonsensical man <laughs> and David inquired and he was told that this had been going on for 40 days night and morning 80 times If you read the entire scripture, you will see that God took his time to describe Goliath and what he was wearing. To let you know that his CV was intimidating. His feet, his head, the shield, this, this, and that. Everybody say, rubbish. Say it with impunity. Rubbish. It does not matter how intimidating your situation is. Say rubbish. rubbish. Say rubbish. rubbish. One more time, shout rubbish. rubbish. So David says, Goes to Elia. What shall be, what's going on here? What shall be done for the person that kills this stupid man? And Elia replies, I know the thought of your mind. Blah, 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 blah. Now listen. David had to deal with three people here. Number one, the ex anointed professional, Saul. Ex anointed. Some of you, you are following expired mentors. The fact that you were relevant in my life and ministry 15 years ago does not mean you are still current in the program of God for my life. Stop following people just because. Only Jesus is the same yesterday and today and forever. You are not. Relationships are not. There are three main people you should even stop relating to. Number one, expired mentors. Number two, jealous colleagues. Number three, parasitic protégés. Expired mentors. Jealous and competitive colleagues. Parasitic proteges. 
All they do is take from you, take from you, take from you, take from you. So David spoke and said, what shall be done? What's going on here? Number two, unanointed professional, Eliab, spoke. Saul, ex-anointed, parked vehicle. You know you can't do it. We've tried it before. You know, you know you met us in this way. You know, you know. Unanointed professional, Eliab. And number three, anti-anointed professional. Goliath. So this anointed professional showed up. And the three of them had something to say to him. Saul said, we've been in this business for long. You are just a youth. That man has been fighting since he was a youth. Excuse me, you just told me now that I am just a youth. And that man had been fighting since he was a youth. Let me also start. Am I not a youth? <laughs> they are always there to rubbish you, to discourage you, to tell you that their negative experiences should affect you. Say rubbish. rubbish. David speaks to the unanointed professional earlier. That one says, who did you keep the sheep with? I know what is in your heart. Don't let anybody talk you out of your dream. Don't. And then, the anti-professional Goliath says, I am very territorial. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to destroy your dream. I'm going to finish you. My best spot is wrestling. I watch wrestling a lot. And I learn lessons. My husband tells me, it's not a game, it's just a script. I say, it doesn't matter, I like it. <laughs> I notice that wrestling is first a psychological war before it is a physical one. So, you see Undertaker <laughs> comes and says, I'm going to kill you today and put you in the casket. And then Triple H shows up <laughs> and says, <laughs> That was the exact thing David did in 1 Samuel 17. Because words are powerful, words are indestructible. When Goliath, the anti anointed professional, released words that polluted the atmosphere. David did not just kill him, David also spoke. If you are too silent, you will be silenced. David spoke. And one of the things David did, we're going to do when I'm closing today. For Samuel 17, 37, David went to the archives and brought out testimonies. The God that delivered me from the mouth of the lion and the bear, he will deliver me. But David did not stop there. David said, Goliath, look at me very, very well. I am too useful to be wasted. You think you can kill anybody? Look at me. I'm too useful to be wasted. You can waste anybody. 
but not me. Let me bring it home. As you journey after this convention and throughout this year, when situations show up and the doctors speak their grammar, you know, doctors, even their signature, nobody can read it. Their, their writings. They just scribble the thing. It's very confusing. When they begin to speak their grammars, hold that paper in your hand and announce, I am too useful to be wasted. Can't you see the way I labor in church? I came before everybody to put this water here. I set everything. I put the tissue. I put the stool. Cancer, I am too useful. Do you know that while you were sleeping, I was in church arranging these chairs, making life and ministry comfortable for my papa and mama? Sickness, I am too useful. Do you know what it costs for me to make this outfit just to be a protocol? Just to be a security, just to be an usher, just to stand by the door, just to stand behind the camera. While all of you are seated comfortably, do you see the way I'm running around, turning the camera, moving everywhere? And then one devil shows up and wants to intimidate you. What do you say? Do you see the way I was praying and fasting just to make sure this conference goes on? This conference succeeds. 21 days, 7 days. Malabasha. Oh God. Oh God. Safety. Security. And then the devil brings you one story. What should be your response? Do you see how I make life comfortable for your pastor? Give him my body. Cook his meal. Produce his children. Give him peace at home. I'm there for him. And then one little situation comes and you are crying and you are you you have your mouth. How can I give back to kids? And then you want to touch me. Who will take care of these children? Satan, are you mad? Are you blind? Look at these children. I'm too useful. Do you see me sewing outfits for people? Making them look beautiful. See my leg. See my hand. See how I'm doing. And then you think you can touch me? Sit down. That's what I brought for you today. Stop allowing situations to blackmail you. I came here today to possibilitize your mentality. I came here today to pump confidence into you. I came here today to let you know that Jesus did not die for you in vain. You cannot be wasted. <laughs> Goliath thought David was joking. David said, Have you peeped into my future that I'm going to be the king and that crowns will be placed on my head? Have you peeped into my future, Goliath, to see that a Solomon is in my loins? Have you peeped into my future to see? <laughs> that I'm going to cut the heads of too many people that are against the people of covenant and you think you can waste me in a motor accident cancer kidnapping rape no can't you see my usefulness can't you see my smile makes people smile can't you see that I make perfumes that make people smell nicely? Satan, are you deaf? Are you dumb? Can't you see the wigs that I create in my salon 
and ladies put it on and they just and their, their husbands are attracted to them. Don't you see the food I cook, the meals I cook? Don't you see the flowers I make? Satan, are you mad? You touch me? I'm going to use your sword to kill you. Stand up. Tell two more people. I, Olufunke, I'm too useful to be wasted. You better say it with your mouth. Can't you see what I'm doing? Can't you hear my songs? Do you notice my offering in the offering bucket? Do you notice what is on the altar that is speaking on my behalf? And you want to waste me? You must be, you must be joking. Adjust your dress. Get a seat. Cross your leg. Take an imaginary glass in your hand. Sip it. Oh, I'm too useful to be wasted. Who can take care of my children like me? Who can be the grandma that spoils? When I go to Houston, my grandkids will tell me, Grandma, Mommy said, I said, Where is the cookie? Where is it? <laughs> take, take, take. And my daughter said, Mom, you are spoiling them. I said, Huh? It's my ministry. <laughs> I'm fulfilling my ministry. Grandkids are sweeter than kids. I say it's my ministry. Let me fulfill my ministry. It is your responsibility to train them. It is my responsibility to spoil them. Don't spoil my ministry. And my grandkids are saying, Grandma, Grandma, <laughs> who will be a grandma to them? Like me. You can't marry my husband. I'm the only one that knows how to manage him. When he's angry, I know the names to call him. Not you. When I need money, I know what to tell him. You, you will just be shouting. You can't marry him. I'm so useful in this life to be wasted by cancer. I'm the husband in the house. Children call me daddy, daddy. My husband, my wife calls me honey, babe. I lift the heavy things. I drive them. And you want to bring prostate cancer. Are you sick? As a man, I'm telling you, Satan, sickness, I'm too useful. I give these children joy. Don't you see how Kenya loves my voice? When I sing, when I'm on air, when I'm selling my, what is that your food? Ugali. This is my closing remark here in this conference. And the Lord laid it on my heart to lead you to pray fiery prayers. Yes. Are you ready? Yes. To seal up this convention. And to seal your destiny. And after we are done with those six prayers or so, we will now dance like we've never danced in our lives before. Yes. Because that was one of the things David was banking on. 2 Samuel chapter 6 when David brought the ark the Bible says 18 pieces 6 feet David will say stop I remember when the lion showed up and God helped me and he will slaughter animals and he will dance and they will continue with the ark 
six paces, 18 feet. Stop! I remember when the bear came. I remember when it was a quarter to a ship. I remember when the pilot said he didn't know what next to do. I remember when Saul was going to kill my ministry and end my life and God showed up. He would dance. If you don't know how to dance before God, you are evil. We should run away from you. Worship is going on. Thanksgiving is going on. You stand like one o'clock. You put your hand in your pocket. As if God has not done you well. You, whose breath is in your nostrils, you that can give an appointment for 11 o'clock and quarter to 11, you are dead. And God sustains you. And it is now time to thank him. And you are behaving as if you are the auditor general of the world. When Abraham ran, I was reading the scriptures this morning, 2 Chronicles 20, 20. Jehoshaphat laid prostrate before the Lord. Israel, Judah, prostrated before the Lord, thanking him. If you are not grateful, you'll be grounded. Gratitude simplifies the journey. After we are done with praying, like five minutes, then we will dance. Whether you are online or you are here, make sure you are a part of this. We want to seal it up. Stand up on your feet. Drop your Bible. Drop everything. Drop. Make sure heaven hears your voice. The first prayer point this morning. My voice shall be louder than the noise of my enemies. Come on, pray. 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 In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. That is a very serious prayer that I told you to pray. That your voice will be louder than the noises of your critics and your enemies. No matter what they say, God will amplify your voice. In the name of Jesus. The second prayer point. We have only six. <laughs> my enemy shall not get to my helper before I do. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. If Minister Sinaj wants to help Prophetess Leslie and she tells me, FFA, I feel in my heart that I should help this prophetess. And I say to Sinaj, hmm, I've not said much, but I have said a lot. Either she will reduce it or cancel it. Ziba got to David before Mephibosheth. <laughs> when I tell you to pray, you better pray. Because as God's apostle, I pick things. Maybe it is for some of you. In the, maybe it's something is trying to silence you. Please pray. You have 30 more seconds to pray that prayer. My enemy shall not get to my helper before me. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Number three. I want you to come against delay. It's not enough to prosper. It is important to prosper on time. On time. It's enough to prosper on time. It's important. I prosper. Got married at 55. That's not it. When will you become a grand? So I want you to pray that one more prayer. 
and then I'm going to pause. I come against delay. I frustrate delay, 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 delay. You are a waster. You will not waste me. Delay. You are a waster. You will not In the name of Jesus. You will not waste me. You will not waste me. Let me cut up my hair. He has to come back again. May God give you a miracle today. He said, "Peter, in the name of Jesus, he cut up my hair. He let me cut up my hair. May God make your feet up." I come against delay in your lives in the name of Jesus. Let your amen roar. Amen. You're watching me online. You joined this service online. Or you're here physically this morning. I have three more prayer points. And you've never invited Jesus Christ to be the Lord of your life. That's the starting point for safety, for progress. For prosperity. Wherever you are, I want you to please lay your right hand on your chest. We're not judging you. We're telling you and inviting you to a great life. Revelation 3.10 Jesus is knocking on the door of your heart. Please put your right hand on your chest and I want you to say this prayer after me. Church, let's encourage them. Please say it to say, my Father and my God I thank you for sparing my life till today. Lord Jesus, Come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Today, I am saved. I thank you, Lord, for writing my name in the book of life. I believe in Jesus' name. Let's celebrate them. Celebrate them. Hallelujah. If you are sick in your body or sick emotionally, psychologically, financially, Seek in your career. I want you to put your right hand on your forehead, whether you are online or you're physically here. Any form of, what is sickness? They call, they call it disease. There's no ease. It may be in your marriage. It may be in your body. Whew. The Bible says the axe is laid upon the root of every tree that my father did not plant. Therefore, I go to the root of this disease and I cut it off in the name of Jesus Christ. I set the fire of the Holy Ghost upon it. Cancer, I curse you. Every form of sickness, I curse you. I deliver you in the name of Jesus Christ. I set you free to serve God. The Bible says you shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless your bread and your water. And he shall take away sickness from the midst of you. Therefore, this sickness is taken away in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree joy, joy, joy over your life. You are blessed in the name of Jesus. Shout a big amen. amen. One more prayer. Stretch your hands. God shall bless the works of your hands. Amen. You shall not be wasted. Amen. God shall keep your destiny intact. Amen. Every battle insulting your destiny, I command it to bow. In your life, there shall be no sudden death. Amen. Everything that you desire of God, Jehovah gives you in the name of Jesus. Amen. You shall enjoy divine interventions. Amen. There shall be no embarrassment in your life. Amen. I come against every organized storm. Amen. I set you free to enjoy God. Amen. You are blessed. You are too useful to be wasted. The blood of the Lamb covers you. Kenya, the nation of Kenya, you are too useful to be wasted. God will deliver you from oppressors. Prosper in Africa. In Jesus' name.